footage was shot at the time. Black widow bites can cause cramping and intense pain. It's been 40 minutes since Kalia was bitten. But she's just been having to this inconsolable crying since about what time? Since probably around 9.45. By looking at her, I could tell that she was having a lot of pain in her abdomen. In kids, if they have so much cramping that they're not breathing adequately, then that can turn into a life-threatening emergency. So that's what she was on the verge of before we stopped uh, the venom in his tracks and gave her anti-venom. And it was just the most amazing thing. Within about 10 minutes of administering the anti-venom, she had calmed down. Being a mom and having a child go through that is just terrible. It's hard. It's like, especially since you think I can protect my children. Just watching her suffer was really difficult. Few black widow bites are fatal. And sometimes they don't even inject their venom. But no black widow bite for me. Feeling the way I do on this arm with one harvester ant sting, I would not at all voluntarily ever go to the next level of four in the pain scale. No thank you. No way. If it happens accidentally in my life, fair enough, but I would not experiment with it. And if my arm worked, I would throw in the towel right now. My next mission is somewhat more pleasant. I'm off to Venezuela in search of giants. Most people think of bugs as scary, but to a bug fanatic like me, it doesn't get any better than here. This is bug heaven, the Amazon rainforest. More species live here than anywhere else in the world. And we're going to where the giants of the bug world live. I'm a thousand kilometers up the Orinoco River. And out there, I'm hoping to meet a ginormous centipede. A beetle big enough to knock you over and the world's largest spider. hunting bugs, you look in depressions, you look everywhere, because they're everywhere. Never know what you're going to find. One of the giants I've heard about is rumored to grow as long as your arm, and it packs a nasty bite. It's the giant centipede, and it's most active when it's out hunting in the late afternoon. I've just seen something that uh, is very exciting. Ah, I can see its legs. Got to figure out where the head end is. Head looks like it might be down here. These things can be really fast. Okay, friend. What we have here is Scolopendron, the giant centipede. And uh, this is a very powerful animal. That's a serious amount of biting power. The mandibles are modified legs that are hollowed like a hypodermic needle. And at the base of them, there's a big poison sac. And the bite being very painful and prone to tissue damage. Although we know, look at that, look at that. I could let these forceps go and it's holding those things together. Well, I'm gonna to try to let this thing go uh, and let it get off to its uh, 
giant centipedly duties. But before I do that, I am going to let it run up the arm of the cameraman. A little nervous, Paul? This is one of the biggest cockroaches in the world, but it's no match for the giant centipede. Giant centipedes are really aggressive hunters. With one bite from those venomous fangs, the cockroach is paralyzed and eaten alive. I put out this light because what I hope to do is attract some giant beetles. And if we're really lucky and they come in, seriously, you have to be careful because they're not small beetles or medium-sized beetles. These are giant beetles, like soup cans with wings that don't fly really well. So be careful, Paul. I mean, we don't want to lose another cameraman, okay? Gotta love bugs, you know? I mean, I mean, look at that. All these toys to play with, all these things, all, each has its own story. Being able to be an entomologist is to be set free in God's shopping mall. Drawn to the light, we find Moths in love. Love is in the air. I've been here for a few hours and no beetles yet, but uh, waiting's part of the game. But unfortunately, there are no giant beetles flying tonight. It's 4 a.m. and I've been stood up. If you're disappointed, so am I. Bug chasing is, well, it's up to the bugs. But out there somewhere is an even bigger prize. A spider so huge, it can cover a dinner plate. And it's not just any spider. I'm on the trail of the giant tarantula. Out there, deep in the heart of Venezuela, the giant tarantula is legendary. And to find it, we need the help of the local Piero Indians. It's the largest of all venomous spiders, and it's found nowhere else on Earth. With fangs almost an inch long and an armory of defensive missiles, this giant is going to be no pushover. Classic burrow. Good. Very large burrow, as a matter of fact. I hope. I hope we're going to get one. And the way we're going to catch it is Piaroa style by duping the spider into thinking there's a meal out here. Look at that. This guy is good. Oh, look at the size of that. Amazing. Ever seen a spider that way? I have. So after a couple hours uh, walking around sweating, um, the search for the giant tarantula has paid off. It's true. This is a fairly small one. They can get with the, the carapace that big. Right? So if you pan down and look at that, you can see that that animal is a teenager. Mind you, a fairly large teenager. It's flicking. You see the flicking on its legs? It's flicking its legs, and I can feel those hairs in the air. My, my skin is getting a little bit irritated. You see the hairs all over the back? They're in a defensive move, this animal will flick 
its hind legs on the abdomen and release all these hairs. If they get in your eyes or in your lungs, it provide a super irritant. Look at that. Wow. Look at the size of those fangs. What an amazing animal, huh? Around these parts, spiders are a delicacy. The giant tarantula, it's being cooked very, very carefully. To me, it tastes a lot, that white meat on there, it's quite sweet. It tastes a lot like 